That's our ring time for Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Women's indignation over the presence and success of Kitty, the lady barber, rapidly rose to the boiling point. They expressed their indignation by yanking their husbands out of the long line of men waiting to get into the barber shop. This news reached Abner just in time to keep him from going down and joining the line himself. Well, we'll soon see what happens next. For many years, friends, baseball, football, golf, and tennis have been first place American favorites. And that's the way it is year after year with Alka Seltzer. Alka Seltzer has become the first place favorite in millions of American homes for quick, effective relief for many common ailments. Take headaches, for example. Alka Seltzer's pain relieving analgesic sodium acetyl salicylate is ready to go right to work on your throbbing head because it's dissolved when you drink it. Alka-Seltzer can give the kind of relief you want when you want it. Now, only Miles Laboratories know the secret scientific process for compounding Alka-Seltzer. And when you need it, be sure you have it. Yes, now's the time to get a large economical package from your druggist. It contains over three times as many tablets as the small size, yet costs only twice as much. Remember, there's nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer. And when your tablets get down to four... That's the time to buy some more. Now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, as we look in on the little community today, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store. Abner is just entering. Come in. Oh, it's you, Abner. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, Lum. No, that's all right. Business has been pretty slow. Glad you're back now, though, because I want to go down... For goodness sakes, what's happened to you? Oh. Your hair. You been in an accident or something? No. You've been scalped, might not. You surely didn't get a haircut like that down at the barber shop. No. The mayor done it. The mayor? Elizabeth. That's why I was late this morning. Elizabeth insisted on cutting my hair. Oh, I think I'm beginning to see. I told her not to bother. I told her she better just get on down to the mayor's office, but she insisted on cutting it. Nothing else to do her. Oh, well, that's easy enough to understand. She's just trying to keep you out of that barber shop while Kitty's there. Yeah, well, I figured that out myself. That's why she cut it so dead blame short, too. <laughs> She's making sure that I wouldn't need another haircut for six months. Well, another year, I'd say. Yeah. She's got you fixed up where you look like you got a marshmallow sitting on your shoulder. <laughs> I know. What I don't like about it is my hat don't fit me no more. Don't it? No, every time I turn a corner, my hat keeps heading in the same direction. <laughs> Looks like you're wearing your ears at half mast. I know how I look. Don't remind me of it. Mom. If you go near a pool table, don't get your head too close to it, or it'll wind up in a side pocket. No. Now, Lom, well, just quit joshing <laughs> me about it. Well, it wasn't my fault. I tried to get out of it, but she slung me in a chair and had to open me a bowl on my head before I knowed what had happened. It looks more like she used a teacup. Well, she finally took the bowl off. It handicapped me, I think. I don't think nothing handicapped her. No, don't get something must up. Lum, would you make a deliver for me a couple of weeks till this sort of goes out a little? Oh, why wouldn't feel so bad about it, Abner? I must be a little picture the size of my ears there. If you think you look bad, you ought to see Mousy Gray. Mousy? Yeah, his woman, Gussie, done the same thing to him, only worse. Poor fella. I believe she must have shaved his head and then sanded it down. What a shame. Dog is I can sympathize with him. And I think there's going to be a few more fellas around here with haircuts like that before we get done with this. The women folks in this town are bound and determined they're going to get shut of that lady barber somehow. I know what they're hating this side I don't think they're going to be able to do it, though. Everything they tried to for has failed. Yeah, yeah. They thought sure they had her the other day when they checked into her barber's license. But everything was in order. She's got a perfect legal right to cut hair if she wants to. Wish I had an order about that barber license stuff. Whoever lives the best give me this haircut. <laughs> well, it don't apply to her. Just for regular barbers that charge money for it. Oh. No, there ain't no legal way to get shut of her that I can see. Well, I bound you they'll study up something along as mad as they are. I 
I know the women folks are holding a special alderman's meeting about it today. I don't doubt it. I hear Elizabeth talking to Miss Quincy over the telephone about it. Of course, she never knows I left it. Well, let me go ahead and have that special meeting. There ain't nothing they can do. There ain't no law that says a man can't go down to the barber shop if he wants to. Damn, huh? In fact, is that's where I'm going pretty soon. You are? Well, all me, you've had everything you can get down there. Shampoo, sand gift. Had your hair thinned out and then had it treated to make it thick again. What else is there down there? Well, I ain't going down there for no barber work. I want to see Walt Bates about some large business. I want to talk to Eugene Blevins about fixing the front porch. Well, what are you going to the barber shop for then? Because that's where they're at. Uh Uh-huh. You know that if you want to find anybody, the place to go is the barber shop. Uh Oh. Everybody hangs out down there now. Yeah, yeah. The The place is jammed all the time. Uh Ain't you been down there at all? Well, I sort of walked by the place. I noticed there's always a big crowd in there, but I ain't been inside myself. What's the matter? You scared Elizabeth will see you? No, it ain't that. It's just that... Well, I'm busy. Who dad blame busy, I think. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, I better get on my way. Keep an eye on things here at the store. There won't be much to do, I can promise you that. I know what. All the women are at the city hall, and all the men are down at the barbershop. I'll take care of things here. Don't I'll you? say hello to Kitty for you. Yeah, all right. Oh, no, wait a minute. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you ladies, get out of that barber chair. You're going to sit there all day? Yeah, you're done, Curly. And snap your safety belt. Get your feet back on terra firma. <laughs> okay, okay. You better count your ears before you pay Brother Moe's there. No refund on missing ears after you leave the barber shop. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a great little vocabulary you picked up there, Curly. Man. <laughs> All right, who's my next victim? Uh, Jiminy, I am. No, you ain't, Grant. Just hang on to your bubble gum for a while. There's a half a dozen of these handsome gents ahead of you. <laughs> I think Clark Gable is next. Oh, do you mean me, Miss Kitty? No, not you, Robert Taylor. You sat in this chair so much, you're beginning to look like Whistler's mother. <laughs> uh, whose mama did you say? I skip it, Dad. Who I meant was check it back. Sam, next to you there. Uh, what? Oh, uh, me. <laughs> yes, to be sure. Come on, Diamond Jim. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, Kemp's the name, Kitty. Uh, M.K. Kemp, Esquire. Okay, M.K., climb into the golden chariot and get the trim of your life. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, pleasure, Kitty. It's a pleasure indeed to be trimmed by the graceful, slender hand of the fairies of the fair. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Better watch out for him, Kitty. Can't believe a word he says. What do you mean? He's the only man here who knows what he's talking about. Oh, yes, yes. Well spoken, my dear. Well spoken. Still, now, let me wrap this oxygen can around your neck. Yes, yes. Anything you say, Countess, my fate is in your hand. So is your scalp, Kimpy. <laughs> my scalp, my fate, my all. I entrusted all to you with the utmost confidence and pleasant anticipation. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Old Clark, he brought up with her. Ah, uh, Skimpy, I'll bet you even play the mandolin. Well, uh, yes, I do strum a little. Uh, I used to, that is, when uh, I was on the old Sneed and Reed. How do you want this dust mop cut? Short, long, or solid? Uh, well, uh, just uh, trim it lightly, Sean. It's uh, clean enough to cover this... Uh, <laughs> Shall we say rather far section on top there? Far <laughs> section? I'd call it a bacon wire. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kitty. What do you think he is? Oh, my God. Who's my head, Oh, don't worry, Skimpy. I won't be your secret to the fair damsels at first. You know, speaking of damsels, I don't believe I'm exactly what they call popular with them. Well, no, uh, there is a noticeable lack of enthusiasm among them for your presence in Pine Ridge, I believe, Kitty. Well, what are the lands up to today? Not a single one of them has come around asking to see my license so far today. <laughs> well, I can tell you, Miss Kitty, they're having a special meeting. Special board of elements meeting. And it's about you. Well, 
Well, ain't I getting to be somebody? Get me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it down here as long as this is where everybody's at. No. Let me see it, Teddy. Yeah, read it, Tom. Uh, let's see what we have to put up with now. And this is uh, statute number 11789, section A and B. Oh, okay, sir, sir. Be it hereby know that beginning on this date and henceforth, no male citizen of the town of Pine Ridge may enter a store, shop, or commercial establishment of any kind and remain there more than five minutes without transacting business. Yeah, what's that? What's that? And upon completion of the transaction, he must leave immediately. Wait a minute. What are they trying to do? Make a morgue out of this place? Well, this is plain to see that it's aimed right at you, Kitty. They're trying to keep us out of the barber shop. The only retreat that we men have left in this town. But don't you worry, Kitty. We'll stand by you. Well, at times like these, the poor working girl certainly needs protection. <laughs> well, our grannies, we'll give it to you, Miss Kitty. Yes, we we'll will. We'll fight this thing through to the finish. That's just no time batch time. of women folks is going to run this town. No, sir. They ain't going to... <laughs> effective than either Love or Squire think. At least it looks as though there's a battle ahead. So join us again in our next regular visit down in Pine Ridge. I know you've all heard it said that Alka-Seltzer's fast action relief is just what you want. And that's true, folks. For example, when acid indigestion comes along to make your life miserable, try Alka-Seltzer. Yes, Alka-Seltzer makes a sparkling, refreshing solution which helps you get fast relief. It helps soothe an upset, jittery stomach. It helps neutralize excess gastric acidity. And its analgesic helps relieve the headache that often accompanies an upset stomach. And that's why we say there's nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer. You see, only Miles Laboratories know the secret scientific process for compounding Alka-Seltzer. You can get its fast relief in any drugstore. Be sure, though, you ask your druggist for and get genuine Alka-Seltzer. Remember, it's the large, economical 60-cent package you want. Then, when acid indigestion comes along, be wise, alkalize with Alka-Seltzer. And when your tablets get down to four, that's the time to buy some more. (laughs) 